Okay, in this quick video, I'm going to be showing how to make this pillar. I'm going to be sculpting using the Dine Topo and then retopologizing and baking the normals onto the low poly. So I've got my cube, I'm going to scale it up and turn it into a pillar. Now one problem you might come up against is if you look at the transforms, I press N to get this panel, you can see that it's got non-uniform scale. So the Z axis I've scaled in is scaled to 3. We need to reset this so the location, the rotation and the scale, ideally all those three, are set to 0, 0 and 1s. We can do this by pressing Ctrl A and pressing scale and you can see now they're all uniform. Now when I go into sculpt mode I won't have any error messages up here. I'm going to start off sculpting with Dine Topo but before I do that I'm going to go back to object mode, go into edit mode and try and make sure it's got relatively uniform topology so all the squares are the same size. Then I can select all with A, W and subdivide. I'll do that once more in fact. Maybe to something around there. Okay, so it's got a nice lot of topology. So when I go into Dine Topo, it won't be pulling things all over the place. So back to Sculpt mode. Turn on Dine Topo. Turn off Symmetry in this case because I don't want it mirrored. And let's start doing our sculpt. I'll bring the detail level down a bit to about 6. Start relatively high, which I would say 6 is high. And then bring it down to something like 4 later on. I'm using the smooth brush with shift and then pressing down and I'm using the draw brush with control to dig into the mesh. So I've got the basic shape there so I'll bring the detail down more and in fact this is probably enough to move to the multi-resolution modifier at this point. There's probably no need to add any more detail. So I've got a basic shape here that I'm pleased with and what I want to do now is use the multi-resolution modifier. Now because I'm in Dine Topo they're not compatible so what I will need to do is try and sort the topology out in this mesh so I can use the multi-resolution modifier and use my nice brushes. Let's go to edit mode and see what our mesh looks like. It's not too bad, it's not too high poly and it's relatively even because we used only a 6 on the Dine Topo. So I can use this as my high poly mesh. Before I do that though, let's name it Pillar High Poly or HP and I'm going to duplicate it at this point with Shift D, keep it in the same place and this one's going to be the low poly version which I will retopologize later on, so it's LP. So let's just hide that for the moment, so I can't select it and it won't render. And here's the high poly one. So with the high poly selected, there's our topology. I'm going to put the multi-resolution modifier onto it. Add modifier, multi-resolution modifier. Now if my topology was a bit uneven, say I'd got more points in here than I needed, I might need to even it out a bit so that it's relatively similar in terms of all the shapes being the same size. So let's see how we get on. Subdivide. Looking at the faces up here, subdivide again. With my graphics card, whilst recording, I can go up to about a million and a half. So that's probably fine. If I subdivide again, in fact I'll save my work first, and try and subdivide, it goes up to four million. And amazingly, it's actually okay. <laughs> which is very nice because I can add a nice lot of detail. But let's go down one level first. It is lagging slightly now. So I've got that fourth level if I need it. I'm going to go down to level two to start with though and see if I can work with that. I'm just going to change the shading to smooth and let's go across the sculpt mode. 
Okay, so now we can bring across our brushes. So I go to texture, add a new texture, and then across to the texture tab over here, which is this checkered icon, and press open. And I can find my brushes. So hopefully you've got a folder of brushes. Mine are from textures.com, or most of mine. There's a few that are from different places. And they've got some great rock brushes from texture.com which should work nicely here. So I'll use that one for example. I find the best way to use these is to use the stroke method just here of anchored. And if I bring that out you can see that that does a great job. And if I press control and bring that out then it creates this nice dent. And of course I can change my strength as I feel fit. Generally I keep the strength fairly low and create subtle effects. If you make too many big dents, it will change the shape so much that it won't be similar to your low poly one. And then you'll need to change the mesh of your low poly, which can be a bit awkward. I'm going to bring the resolution up slightly. So go up to three. So I think it'll do a better job. Overlapping the brushes will give them variation rather than having the same consistent look. I'll add a new brush by pressing the plus sign here. Going back over to our brushes and pressing open again, finding a new brush and using a variety of brushes will help you a lot. You don't have to rely on the rock brushes, you can use things like the pinch brushes for the edges. Alt F will zoom you in onto a certain region and then you can use the pinch brushes to add your own style and detail. Remember to use reference images for these things, it will help you an awful lot. I like to create a new brush, so a new draw brush, you can see there's two here now, and then one I'll call stencils, and then I know I've got my stencils in there. So this is my stencil brush, and it's set to act stroke method anchor, and then my other draw brush I can set to normal, which is space, and that way I can go in and create what I need to create. Okay, so I'm going to call that done. There's still a lot of work that could be done to it. Most 
pillars would probably have a layer of plaster on that I could edit and work with. A lot of my reference images have that sort of thing. It's important to look at your reference images all the time whilst you're doing these sort of things. So I'm going to save my work. And now I've got a pillar high poly and my pillar low poly there. I'm going to bring us out of sculpt mode into object mode. And my preview is only at two, so we should be able to go nice and quick. And I'm going to check that my low poly isn't too far out from my high poly. And it's all looking pretty much okay. So with my low poly selected, I'm going to add a decimate modifier and bring this down. And what I'm looking for is for this to be reduced right down to really basic forms. As you can see there, it's doing a reasonable job. You do get this sort of problem where it's really stretched, but we can sort that out in a second. We keep going. There we go. So nice and low there. Before I apply it, I'm going to duplicate this with Shift D. Make sure you have the little arrows selected so you can select it. And label this before decimate. And I can just hide those. Okay, back to my low poly one and apply. Now let's see what it looks like, which is pretty good, it's not too bad. There's a fair bit of stretchiness there. What you need to look out for is these very tight, sharp lines. They can cause problems later. But on the whole, it's not too bad. So this particular line here will probably cause us problems. So what we can do, you can use the cut tool with K and we can cause a cut down here into this one. And then we can just move this out a touch. And can you see the, the shape in the background? We want to bring it close to that so we can bring it out here. G to grab. So we're looking around, making sure there's none that are too tight. There seems to be one just here. And like I say, it's done an okay job. If you want to reduce the topology even further, you can turn snapping on and select vertices so that when you select vertices, it will snap to another one like that. But also you can click this one here and it will automatically merge the vertices. So if I grab that one and put it into there, it will merge it. I don't want to do that just at the moment but there may be ones around here that I might want to merge. Let's try this one. This is a cheap and quick way of doing it. A better way is actually to retopologize properly uh, using retopologize techniques shown in other videos. I'll put a card on the screen now. Okay, and we can see how we get on with this so there's our low poly, and it's just under a thousand faces. It's not particularly low poly, but it's pretty good. If you want to go even more low poly, you can. Okay, so now I want to do the bake. So the first thing we need to do is unwrap our low poly object. Select all with A, and press U, Smart UV Project, and just press OK for the moment. Those same tools are now down at the bottom here. And let's bring out our UV editor. I'm going to move across the cycles because I prefer to do everything in one render engine. And that's done quite a nice job actually. It's good if you've got quite big areas. And of course you can increase the and decrease the angle limit to try and increase those areas. But it's pretty good as it is really. Uh, one thing to remember is to put your island margin up so you've got some space and distance between your islands. Therefore when you come to paint, they don't bleed into each other. Okay, so let's get the node editor up as well. So down the bottom here, node editor. And because I started in Blender Render, I need to tick use nodes. Most of you will see just this. Okay, so in order to bake, I need to create a new texture. So new, we'll call it pillar normals or pillar norm. And 2048 should be fine. And press okay. 
and then we need this texture to be down here so we press shift A to add texture image texture and then we can add our pillar normals just there it doesn't need to be connected at the moment just selected that's important okay so we can go from our pillar high poly which has the sculpt and the render at four so the render is the important bit apparently and then we select our low poly second so I've got high poly selected first low poly second come down to the render tab okay and then we come down to the bake panel at the bottom click on normals selected to active and because I'm not using a cage which is an object that goes around our high poly mesh we need to put the ray distance up and start off about five that means the low poly will shoot out uh, rays at a certain distance difficult to explain in this tutorial that's for a whole separate tutorial and then click bake if you have any error messages up here hopefully that will tell you exactly what's wrong but it's usually something like not having this selected or selecting the high poly last instead of first so it's selected to active and the bake will appear in here and after a crash and a restart I did it without my screen recording and I came up with this if I press shift spacebar you can maximize that screen and you can see this is pretty good there don't seem to be any errors these are just where the bleed is if I select my low poly and go into edit mode back to here you can see that I'm all okay it seems you can usually tell if a normal maps wrong you should get some funny colors around the place but they should be this sort of bluey greeny purpley look everywhere if you do have issues it could be your ray distance not high enough at times you even get issues after that and you can take your normal map save it which I'm gonna do now image save image and you can take it into something like Photoshop or you can put it into the color and then paint your texture by using the smear brush I'll probably do another tutorial on that if people would like it so lastly we've got to see how this looks let's delete our diffuse and use the shader shift a shader and the principled shader so I'll just maximize this for the moment here's my image texture remember to change it to non-color data and I need to shift a and use a vector normal map to hook it up to my normal map color to the color and normal to the normal and of course my output because I added a new shader into the surface back to here let's hide our high poly and shift Z and you can see it working but there's not enough light to see so we'll add a bit of light in I'll make this a sun and turn it down a bit and there it is I'm gonna add in a, another sun so we can see a bit better like a three-point lighting setup and there it is a fairly decent job the next thing to do would be to paint so in the next episode we'll look at painting and applying those textures thanks for watching